guys, Wes here, back with another episode of 5 Minute Fridays. Sorry I missed last week, um, just got really busy with some projects. And just to provide you guys with an update, this coming week I will be completing the 6 part or maybe 7 part .NET Core 2.0 series um, with Azure. I've also been working hard to release the second course over at Productive Dev, um, and so that should also be released very shortly. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at something I get a lot of questions about, which is my editor, um, which is Vim, typically. Um, when I'm coding for the tutorials here and often at work, I'll be using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code with Vim key bindings. So if you're not familiar with Vim, this um, will just serve as a little bit of an introduction to a really powerful text editor in Vim. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I've got Visual Studio Code open here. And before we dive into Vim, if you'd like to install a Vim keybinding emulator for uh, Visual Studio Code, just go ahead and open it up and then Control Shift P and take a look over at extensions. And just search for Vim and you can go ahead and add it as an extension to your Visual Studio Code. So all this will do will basically provide you with some of the key bindings that are available and that you may be familiar with in the Vim text editor. So if you're not familiar with Vim, it is a, an extremely powerful text editor. It started out, or I should say its predecessor, VI, came about sometime in the mid-70s. And from VI came Vim, um, which has been around since the very early 1990s. So it's been around for a while, and it is definitely a very popular editor among developers. One of the nice things about Vim as a text editor in general is that it is typically available on any system that you might be working on. So it's gonna be available on any Linux distribution, it's available on Mac, and you can install it easily on Windows. I'm not gonna get into all the details about Vim. That would definitely take much more than five minutes. Um, I may make a video series on it in the future if anyone's particularly interested in it, but it's something that I would definitely recommend learning. When I started to learn Vim, it was definitely like a huge learning curve or what felt like a huge learning curve because it was so different than what I was used to. So in short, Vim makes use of some special key bindings and several different modes for editing text. So getting used to all these key bindings at first is a little overwhelming and it's kind of hard to memorize at first. But if you keep working with it, eventually it becomes muscle memory. And then um, if you're like me and many other developers, then you actually miss those key bindings in applications where Vim key bindings aren't available. So let's talk a little bit how I edit text with Vim, um, just in a simple JSON file like this. I'm gonna go ahead and close out our extensions here. And so Vim has several different modes. You can see right now we're in normal mode. This is just gonna be for navigating around a file. And one of the things that you'll notice right away if you're new to Vim is that in normal mode, it doesn't seem like many of the keys really do anything. Sometimes it looks like your cursor kind of moves around um, or something else happens when you're typing. So, and that's because normal mode isn't for text editing. It's really for navigation. So to move the cursor around on the screen, we'll be using the H, J, K, and L keys. And so you can see J will move down, K will move up, L will move right, and H will move left. So this will move your caret one character in any of these directions. So if we look at a keyboard diagram, um, you can see that the H, J, K, and L keys are in a line on the home row of your keyboard. This keeps your hands really close to on the keys that you'll be pressing most often and prevents you from needing to sort of stretch to reach these arrow keys to do some basic navigation. As a side note, something else that I do and I know many other developers do is actually remap the caps lock to control. So caps lock isn't really a very useful key in general. And so it's much more useful as a control key. So I like to remap caps lock to control. And then again, we have control on the home row here now as well. So let's talk a little bit more about navigation. So if I have a file like this and I wanna move down a line, I can type J. If I wanna move up, I can type K. Um, but let's say I wanna move down three lines. Well, in that case, I can just type three J and move down three lines. If I wanna move back up three, then I can type three K and quickly move the cursor up three lines. The same thing works if I'm going left or right as well. And H, J, K, and L are really used for sort of fine grain movement. We're only moving one character at a time or some set number of characters at a time. There are lots of other ways to navigate as well. So I'm gonna show an example here. If we type capital G, that's going to go to the bottom of the file here. Then if I type GG, lowercase, 
then that's going to move to the top of the file. So I can quickly move between the top and the bottom of a file of any size in Vim that's open in the current buffer, in other words, the current file that I have open in the editor, using capital G or GG to go back to the top. And there are even more, you know, dozens more types of sort of navigation commands available. Let's say that I have a space in between um, two blocks of code. And so to open up a new line in Vim, I can type O, that's gonna open up a new line, and then this is also gonna put me in insert mode, which is the mode that you use to actually insert text. So I'm gonna hit escape to go back into normal mode. And now to jump to areas where there are spaces in code like this, the next available white space, I can hold shift and use the curly brace. Um, so I can basically use the curly braces to jump between areas of white space. So this is another way that I sort of scroll up and down through files relatively quickly. Another thing we can do is jump to a word using W. So if I type W here, I jump to the word here where I have this emit decorator metadata. If I type W again, this is going to jump to the next uh, sort of delimiter for a word. In this case, we have a double quotes. So W again will move to the next word. I can move back a word with B. And B will move back to the beginning of the next word. And so by delimiter here, I mean that Vim is sort of seeing the double quotes as a word object. And so the beginning of each of the words here in this case would be uh, the first double quotes and then this emit decorator metadata and double quotes and then over to the, the beginning of the word true. So that's yet another way to move around in Vim. Um, if we type zero, that's gonna move to the beginning of the line. If we type dollar sign, that's gonna move to the end of the line. If I type shift six or caret, that's gonna move to the beginning of uh, the text on the line. And so you can see there are just a ton of different ways to navigate here. Say I wanna change the words that are in between these quotes here. Well, if I DI and then the character, so in this case quotes, I can delete just specifically what's inside the quotes. If I need to quickly undo, then in normal mode, I can just type U and that will undo what I've just done. Control R will redo and you will continue to undo. Let's say that I just want to delete a word. Well, I can do that with DW. I can also change the character under the cursor with R. So let's say that I want to change the U here to an I. If I R I, then you can see that I've just changed the U to an I. And there are just a ton of other things. If I need to capitalize a letter, I can use the tilde sign to capitalize. Um, and so you'll just learn all these commands over time that save you a lot of time from having to reach over to the mouse and then click and highlight and use the backspace and arrow keys and that sort of thing to navigate. Whereas if you learn Vim, you will very quickly learn how to navigate through files um, with ease and editing code just becomes so much more fluid and enjoyable. So as I mentioned, I may make a video series in the future about learning Vim or about configuring Vim. That's something that we didn't really touch on in this video. Um, Vim's highly configurable and there are lots of plugins for it. It's really just a, a very powerful tool and probably my, my favorite tool that I use when I code. So that's it for today. Like I said, I hope that answered some questions and I look forward to catching you next time.